Hi everyone, my name is Warby. I'm a Technical Marketing Engineering Manager with Palto Networks. Today I want to talk to you about our new VM series integration in AWS with the Elastic Load Balancer and with Auto Scaling. So in this case, we have a virtual private cloud or a VPC running in AWS. We have a couple of availability zones for redundancy. And we have some kind of application running here, like a web application, behind an AWS Elastic Load Balancer or an ELB. So this tier needs to be able to scale based on the demand for that specific application. We want to introduce the VM series firewall without breaking that auto scaling. And so we're going to add another tier of auto scaling and elastic load balancing to create what we call the ELB sandwich. And this is what it looks like. So we have our external load balancer, and behind that, we'll put our firewalls. And we'll start out with one per AZ for complete redundancy. So the important thing here is that the VM series firewall itself may have a reason to auto scale, and we don't want it to be tied in any way to the web application. We want it to be based on the firewall metrics. So we actually created a solution working with native AWS services where we can independently scale both of those tiers. So in this case, this load balancer and these firewalls are going to be in an independent auto scaling group from this load balancer and these web applications. The entire solution is going to be deployed using a CloudFormation template or CFT which is the first native service from AWS that I want to talk about. So all of this is in a template where you actually can be prompted for parameters and then automatically the VPC, the AZs, the routes, the subnets, everything you see is set up for you. And it can be tuned for your unique use case. The next step is when the firewalls themselves are deployed, we're going to take advantage of a PanOS 7.1 feature called bootstrapping where we can actually use an S3 bucket from AWS, host an initial configuration, including information on how to connect to Panorama. So these firewalls come up fully licensed, fully configured, ready to handle traffic. One of the great services in AWS is a, a feature or a service called Lambda, where we can write custom code to take advantage of the AWS API and the powerful PanOS API and create new and unique integrations. So in our case, we're going to use Lambda to do things like add multiple ENIs at the time of an auto scale event, which is not natively supported yet in AWS. But we can also do other things like collect metrics, and I'll show you what that looks like. So what that looks like is we're going to use a Lambda function that's actually going to configure the interfaces on the firewall each time a firewall is added in the auto scale group so that it can handle the traffic between these layers of the ELB sandwich. We're also going to use another Lambda function to connect to our PanOS API and collect custom metrics, uh, metrics specific to PanOS that AWS EC2 metrics aren't natively aware of. We're going to send those and publish them as uh, custom metrics to CloudWatch, where we can configure thresholds for when we need to scale out, meaning add more firewalls, or when we can safely scale in to save costs and remove unneeded firewalls. So as an example, uh, you may have your base configuration up and running, and suddenly you, there's a large demand for your application. It could be that it's because of the time of the day, or perhaps something happened in the press where there was a lot of interest in your application. So let's look at how that actually looks when it's scaling. So in this specific example, uh, we have our, our base config, but because of demand, initially maybe these web servers need to grow based on CloudWatch metrics that are native to AWS. And so we'll add a few more. And this may be enough, but it could be that, for example, the number of sessions on the VM series are getting too high for just two firewalls. And our Lambda function is monitoring that. It sees that it's getting too high. Uh, an alarm, a threshold is reached on CloudWatch. So we're going to add more firewalls when we need those as well.
And later, at the end of the day or at the end of the peak demand, uh, those metrics will be continued to be monitored. And if we see that we no longer need this much compute at any of these tiers, we can remove them as well to save costs. So you may have heard about a recent announcement from AWS called the Application Load Balancer, or ALB. This is another version of Load Balancer from AWS. How we integrate with the ALB is actually the same. So we'll support both models, both an ELB and an ALB version with a template that'll accommodate those. And that's the end of the Lightboard portion. Up next, I'm gonna show you a desktop demo of a full deployment of this entire template, including some scale events as well. So this is the architecture that will be launched by a template in this demo, including the VPC and all the components that you see here. I have a panorama configured. There's a device group ready to receive new uh, virtual firewalls as they come up. Uh, currently it's empty. And I have a bootstrapping config that will automatically add new firewalls to the panorama. So in this case, I'm going to launch the entire config, including the VPC. So I choose the VPC template. And I'm going to give the stack and the VPC a name. Uh, I choose to use, uh, not use the NAT gateway. I'm going to use EIPs instead. And a couple of availability zones. Specify my key. And I need to specify the Lambda, or rather the S3 bucket for the Lambda functions and the S3 bucket for the bootstrap config. So I plug those in as part of the parameters. I have the API key for the firewall and for panorama. And I give the load balancers, the two load balancers and the load balancer sandwich, I give them their names. In this case, I'm going to tune the scaling parameters, make it scale a little more aggressively for the purpose of the demo. And acknowledge the IAM permissions. And at this point, everything that was shown in the drawing will be launched automatically. So I've sped this up a little bit. Uh, it takes about five minutes for the template to finish, including the nested template that automatically gets created for the firewall auto scaling groups. Once it's finished, you'll see the status change to create complete. And if we switch to the EC2 instance view, we can see there's two firewalls and two web servers, one per AZ. So we have our initial footprint that's fully redundant. And because I chose the EIP option, I can connect directly to each of these firewalls. And again, because I have a bootstrap config, they're fully configured. These are using subscription license licenses, so they're fully licensed. And because my bootstrapping config had the details for how to connect to Panorama, I can see that they're automatically added to Panorama when I do a refresh. And I didn't have to do any config manual config change on Panorama itself. So now this entire environment is spun up. Next, we want to see what happens when new virtual IPs show up for the internal load balancer. So I'm going to run a tool called Apache Bench, where I'm going to launch lots of traffic against my web farm just to cause a scale event. And I've edited out the, uh, the delay here, but I ran that for several minutes. And I can see that a new virtual IP showed up and a new virtual firewall in a new auto scale group for that IP is automatically created. <clears throat> So again, it was fully bootstrapped, no manual configuration or licensing required. 
And when I do a refresh, I now see my third virtual firewall automatically was added to Panorama. So I did a, a second launch of a different stack. And in this case, I wasn't using Panorama, but I did actually host some content. And so if I log in, or actually rather connect to this application, it's hosting this uh, funny video. So I can show that that actually shows up on the firewalls. Again, I wasn't using Panorama, so I'll check each firewall individually, do a refresh on the traffic log. And here I can see that, in fact, the load balancer sent HTTP video traffic to the firewall per my policy. So this is the uh, end of the demo. Uh, please click on the link below to get more resources on this solution, and thank you very much.